But if I stick to what the Quran says to me and what the message is, it's very clear to me that I have total equality. Just do as it says. And nobody can argue with you. Looking at the Quran, it's the perfect way of life for me. If I keep on the clear message it's given me, and it's very simple to love people, to care for people. For you? Yeah. Would you come in? Do Thank you. Come Before converting to Islam a year ago, Jam was a Christian. She's separated from her husband and has two sons who've now left home. Some friends have said that you were a good Christian, so why have you um, sold out, almost, is what, what they would imply. And I think my answer to that is, well, I didn't know about the prophet. And indeed, in the Bible, Jesus actually does say, somebody will come after me. So I think, for me, it hasn't been at all a sell-out of my faith. It's been an enriching of my mm. faith. Nearly broke my fast then. Did you notice? No. <laughs> but I didn't. What did you do? Well, I've got some garlic on my thing, and I've just about to <laughs> lick it up. But I didn't. There is a lot of rule following, isn't there? Yes. Um, do you like that? I have no problem at all praying. Because it brings you in God's presence five times a day. What hampers me is um, fearing I'm going to put a foot wrong with the culture. You know, like if I can't pronounce this properly, if I'm not wearing the right clothes, if I'm not behaving appropriately. As all my friends so does mean you have to get all sort of scarved up and walk about, um, you know, like with um, a bed sheet on you, who's going to see you just with your eyes. And I said, no, it isn't like that, you know, because that's cultural, isn't it, to separate the cultural uh, from what the face is saying. The face is saying to dress modestly and to cover yourself appropriately and to not, um, not dress in a way that is provocative. Cultures interpret that differently, don't they, as we've seen in Afghanistan and, and various places like that. But do you do things like shake men's hands and yes. be in a room with a man and yes. all of that intermixing? Yes. I can't see myself making that shift very easily because I'm an English woman and I, I see men and women. Men and women come to my house, I see men and women at work. If it is in the Quran that you shouldn't be in the same room as a man on your own who's not family, then... I feel the way that I deal with that for myself is what your intention is. I just find it really difficult. I, I really do, and I think that... And I'm still struggling with many aspects of that, and I can't deny it, really. There are issues about the whole thing that you're meant to question, but you can't just go around sort of thinking, well, this is what I think, you know, and it's not fair for women. I think, you know, like looking at what I was like in the 70s to how I am now, like my mum and my sister and I went to Greenham Common. I had um, orange hair that was like a quarter of an inch all over. I used to wear dungarees. <laughs> I never burnt my bra. I never did anything like that. I didn't go to that. I thought, what's this all this about? Um, but I was kind of, I was a right-on feminist in those days, really. And it was essential. I mean, it wasn't until, what, the 60s that we could own our own property in England. We could have a bank account without our husband having to sign the cheque. Islamic women have always had those rights. If I stick to what the Quran says to me and what the message is, it's very clear to me that I have total equality. Just do as it says, and nobody can argue with me on that. It's the end of Ramadan, and Jan calls. She's made a major decision. Despite her more liberal interpretation of the rules of Islam, she's decided to wear the hijab. It's Monday morning, and she's got to go to work. How are you feeling about it? <laughs> And well, I was, it was, I was just upstairs in the bathroom, and uh, um, <sighs> yeah, I feel quite emotional, really. Why are you going to start wearing the scarf? To wear a scarf for me, as an English woman in Islam, is a real statement, and I really feel I want to do it, and it just feels the right time to do it. I think what makes me feel a little upset is, um, I think, I'm moving on, isn't it, really? Because um, people have known, some of them, my friends at work, know that I've been looking at this face. But to actually go today with a scarf feels quite, um, quite a journey, really, I suppose.
I'll be all right in a minute. I will compose myself. Have you thought hard about what scarf you're going to wear? Yes, I did. I did. I've seen a lot of people wearing scarves in different ways. And um, I think I quite like this way, and it seems acceptable and doesn't feel too too covering for starters, for beginners. What I'll be like in five years, <laughs> or whatever. Also, I'll put a top on too, because I protect space to pray like this. So you wouldn't go out in that T-shirt then? No. Did you used to? Yes. It's amazing how you sort of change, isn't it? As I look over my clothes now, I think oh, that's probably not appropriate to wear. Like, what have you got in there now that you wouldn't wear? Uh, this is a, quite a favourite skirt of mine, actually. I really like this skirt. But it's got slits at the side, you know? You do have to sort of think about... about your clothes more. Um, you see, that skirt I couldn't wear anymore. Because it's, you know, it's quite tight. Too. This is a bit short. Well, I don't know. A bit figure-hugging, too, isn't it? Mm. You see, you've got to be so careful. That would show your bum, wouldn't it? Show your bum. I quite like bright scarves, and I quite like flowery ones, too. I wondered if that was partly the hippie in me that was. Flower power and all that. Make love, not war. It's still the same today, isn't it? Show love. Mm. Um, and not make love anymore. Not You're not supposed to do that, are you? <laughs> Yes, I think, I think interestingly, you know, the prophet didn't deny it, did he? I mean, the prophet didn't sort of object to that, did he? Uh, in fact, one, somebody once said to me the prophet was a whole man, you know, unlike Jesus, who you don't know what he's up to, and, you know, the people, <laughs> you don't know what he did or what he didn't do, because um, you, you don't know what his life was about. I don't think that I'll go today with any expectations of myself. I'll just get on with my working day. But I think from now on, I will begin to slowly but surely be more Islamic in the way I am, really. It feels like I've had the apprenticeship this year, and it's been a difficult year. I actually feel quite ill-prepared today. <laughs> Jan arrives at the Northern General Hospital, where she works as a counsellor. I feel quite nervous, actually. It's the first day of her new life wearing hijab. This is where I work, Sheffield Kidney Institute. Morning. There isn't anything for me, is there? Liz Lidget. Liz Lidget? Yeah, okay. Asking All right, guys, I'll catch you later. Bye. They didn't say anything. Do you think that's what happened people are going to react? I think that might be what that I just kind of say, what's that about this? Here we are, I think we'll compose it. Doors opening. Morning. Are you okay? I'm fine. Hi. Hi. Nice to what's see you. What's this? I know. Get in here. We'll, we'll discuss. This is a statement. Um, yes. It yes. probably is, isn't it, really? It's probably uh, a move forward, really. It's Quite cool. Do you think it looks okay? <laughs> I know, Thanks people. To the blonde I know. <laughs> and how have you found it this morning? This morning it's felt okay. Good. I was very shaky at home because it just felt like um, it's a lot of explaining, isn't it? It's yeah. Of, but lots of people know that the the way that your face has been going, sure. I mean, you, you have been open and you've yes, talked about this. Yes, this is this, true. So. This is true. In the hospital, it's very secular. It doesn't recognise a god particularly. It's cause and effect, isn't it? got an illness we cure it. We don't look at the soul and a lot of problems that people have with emotional illness is there. And I think if you can help them spiritually, you don't have to say become a Muslim. This, but to try and help them, I feel, is what I want to do more now, really. And I do think, thank you, Allah, God, because I kind of think, blimey, I've got so many things to learn and to do. Could be sat in my twin set, couldn't I, somewhere? Waiting for the grandchildren to come. Looking at the Quran, it's the perfect way of life for me. If I keep on the clear message it's giving me, and it's very simple to love people, to care for people. 